come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> I love hey, it. thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. Every Saturday night, the Freak Show happens, whether you're ready for it or not. Uh, this is a movie review podcast. We watch a movie chosen round robin by somebody in the group, and then we sit around, watch it, talk about it for your listening pleasure. Who are these people who will talk about it? You ask the internet radio superstars, Sean, Holly, Michaela, and I'm Colin. I and, suppose uh, if they were uh, viewing this podcast on YouTube, they'd be low watching. <laughs> low watching. Yeah, low I watching. think so. Cause it's, it's on YouTube. So you got the, Video, quote unquote, and they would are listen. There, are, so there that's photos, are there photos to this look at? This is probably a photo. There's just a photo. Just a, a photo. A graphic. We'll watch the photo. We'll watch yeah. the photo. <laughs> there yeah. you go. All right. All right. You can find us on YouTube. Yes, we you can. can. iTunes, mm-hmm. Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, Pop and a. more. Mm-hmm. Uh, that one fucking one you keep you saying. What's the one? Google Play. No, it's got a weird name. Pod, Pod Bay. No, not the one. Cast Roller. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Cast Roller. If you have found us on one of those fantastic services. Let us know services, if you found us on Cast Roller. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and give know. us a star or a uh, like because it helps like Just move us up the ranks mm-hmm. into, uh, you know. Subscribe to even. The annals of podcast history. Subscribe. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All Do right. It. So who chose this week's movie? Michaela. Michaela. And what did we watch? We watched Quinn Dupieux's 2010 Rubber. Dupieux. 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 He is a Frenchman. Dupieux. Dupieux. Is it a French movie? It's Dupieux. Technically, it is, it yes. It is a French surrealist Technically, movie. Technically, it is, is a French is. movie, That's yes. what this movie is. Um, <laughs> this is the genre. Yes. Uh, and this movie, believe it or not, is about a tire with psychokinetic powers I that kills people. You. Believe it. It's real. It is not a 70s movie either. It It sounds like it could be a 70s C-level grindhouse movie, but this is a 2010 movie. Half a million dollar budget in this movie, believe it or not. Half a million. Mm -hmm. So how they did the tire effects? That was the thing I was sitting there watching the whole that's, time. I know a little bit about that. Question no, that okay. Because you wonder if there's something like motors r- around the rim of the tire, or they're yeah, just digitally they erasing some guy like spinning the tire. Yeah, a whole guy. Uh, well, I that's... have an answer for you. Oh. So um, it's very similar to like Jim Henson type, um, like remote controls is what they had. They had some mechanics on the inside of the tire, like mm-hmm. you were saying. And then they had a guy with a remote kind of like turning the tire and rolling it and stopping at a dime. And they had to like keep redeveloping them because they kept showing up in the shot because uh, you have such a low profile with the tire of yeah. what you can have in there without it showing. So yeah. it's basically like, yeah, there's like mechanics along the inside of the tire that make it move and rotate. And there's a guy with like basically like a drone pilot, you know, kind of like with yeah. a remote making sure. it move. Um, and then like I think for like the the longer shots where he's just rolling down a street and not stopping. They literally just have a guy push the tire down the road for that one. So. And I'm assuming in like the close up shots where you can't see the whole tire, there's yeah. someone handling it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. I like the way that you called him a he. He. Yeah, his name's Robert. Okay. Well, he has a name. <laughs> I mean, they don't say it, but he has a name. Name he or it, she. It could be a she. Let's look, look at the video box art. Oh, it oh, says here, ah. Rubber is the story of Robert, an inanimate tire. Robert. He has a name. <laughs> okay. He does. <laughs> Did so Robert is- have a stand in, a stunt double? I hope so. They said there were like three or four of them. And, oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You'd have to. So it's literally a movie mm-hmm. about a tire. Now, you wonder, you might be wondering, folks, like, how can you get an entire feature out of this premise? How long is it? 83 minutes. An 83-minute feature about a tire rolling around and killing people. You make <laughs> most of the movie make no sense. All right, so on purpose. So what's going on with this? All right, so maybe you should set this up. Like, what's the? Uh, well, I guess we already did set it up. But the beginning what? of the movie, before we actually see the tire, is one of the like. It's this is on the level of like David Lynch or something, right? This is mm-hmm. kind of that surrealism that Sean was talking yes. about, where you're going to have uh, a, a character driving a car down a road that's full of chairs, where he's aiming. For a bunch of chairs like an obstacle course you think maybe originally that he's gonna go in between them but he's knocking them all over that's how you get my attention yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. this is when i heard you guys sitting there like oh what, what, uh, what's right. going on? there's little <laughs> chuckles like oh that's this is odd he's aiming for all these uh chairs car stops <laughs> and a guy a gets out of the move. trunk mm-hmm. grabs a glass of water looks directly the into camera. the camera 
and gives a speech, mm-hmm. which I think is the uh, underpinning for, of like the no entire reason. movie. Mm. Definitely. Mm-hmm. So uh, the director didn't want to write a backstory as to why Robert has his powers and why he comes to life. He just wanted to make a weird movie about a tire killing people. So they wrote the movie about the tire killing people and then reverse engineered that opening scene of being like, hey, there's no reason for this, so don't think too much about it. Just enjoy the movie for what it is. And it ended up being way more meta than they intended it to be. Sure. But, you know, he just, he wanted to get that out of the way at the beginning so that people wouldn't be like, well, this doesn't make any sense. And just right. be like, don't fucking think about it. Just enjoy the movie for what it is. Well, it begs the question of why do you want to make a movie about a killer tire? I mean, why I not? suppose you're kind of, I mean, what, you have, if this wasn't a movie about a killer tire, it'd be about a killer, an amnesiac killer with psychokinetic abilities that awakens in the desert, wanders to town, discovers that he can kill people, likes it, Mm -hmm. starts murdering people, Mm -hmm. and the... We've that'll, already seen a movie about people yeah. blowing up other people's heads, tele- you know, out. psychokinetically. That's scanners. We've seen yeah, that already. Yeah. I mean, you know? so if you so want to do that movie, but you want to do it differently. Yeah. I mean, who, I just, like, what, a tire. Like, who had that, like, idea at one point? Just like, let's insert the tire. The tire right. can be it. Why not a killer donut? I suppose because a tire can, like, get around. Well, mm-hmm. yeah. It's yeah. made to... It's made to go. I know, like, the first, like, third of the movie when we see him, like, learning how to, like, move for the first time and, like, learning that he can, like, crush things and stuff. That whole thing was inspired by the first act of Wally, where, like, Wally's by himself yeah, and kind yeah. of, like, you know, figuring out his surroundings. So I think if you look at it through that lens of, like, you're watching this inanimate object go through a journey of self-actualization mm-hmm. it makes a lot more sense as a movie well i mean it worked pretty well i mm-hmm. thought you know that uh, you know you, you see the thing wake up well, I mean, we're saying a tire wakes up right i mean well, it, it tries exactly to gain it's uh <laughs> sea legs are standing mm-hmm. and then rolling and then uh you know, I think that it's like, you know, the I can't remember what the music was like there. I think the music like really kicked in once he had uh, figured out his psycho kinetic mm-hmm. abilities. We're saying psycho kinetic because there's a point made in the movie yes. that that is what this uh, mm-hmm. right. it's not telekinetic psycho kinetic abilities. Mm-hmm. But that it does like uh, amorph amorph anthropomorphic. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they. I think the strongest thing about this movie is how they make something as simple as a tire emote really well. Mm-hmm. Like, for me, it always stands out a lot at the scene where he's drinking water out of a puddle. That's the scene where, like, I think the emoting from, like, such a simple object is the best. Yeah. And, you know, uh, the director also said that, like, his original intention was to make Robert just, like, a completely, like, evil, straight-line, one-dimensional character but like after filming a little bit of it, he said it's just like an idiot dog running around, you know, and he's like, it's kind of like like they were laughing at the dailies, basically, mm-hmm. you know, being like, this is not menacing. It's like an idiot dog just running around the desert, right. you know, that happens to kill people. So know any better. So he just kills. people. Exactly. So is this a hipster movie? It might be. I mean, it's like it's a bunch of. They're French, like, so you got to take that into account, you know? Yeah. You got to put the French spin on it. Every day, like, can you believe that people gave us the money to make this? I'm doing an Italian again. Yeah. 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 That we are assuming right now it was, was made sh- on a dare. It was shown at Sundance as well. Well, because it's what artistic. Sundance think yeah, of was, this it, was it funded by Firestone? It, no. <laughs> no. Like, Why? Yeah, you you know what? <laughs> our image, the tire going <laughs> right. and killing people. Scratch off the brand on the tire. Yeah. So that is like, a good whoa, point. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Good this year. is a perfect. Not saying that we're making killer tires. <laughs> yeah. This is a perfect opportunity for some product placement in this right? movie, and there's none. There is right? no product placement in this movie anywhere. Nobody wants their name on a killer tire. Like, you know, Come on, no one, no one's stupid enough to believe that this is, you know, <laughs> no, some, a representation right. of there's a some, brand. There's some guy out there who's like, <laughs> whose dream was like, I'm going to start a tire company one day, and he yeah. worked. He's been working so hard for ten years, and he's barely making it, and he sees this, and this is his opportunity. He's going to get his tire brand in there. 
He'd go for it. Probably him. Yeah. But Get then, his name he, on But the tire, tire companies are worried that some you know copycat whack job is going to go out there and start killing people with tire. You know, he's been like, I don't know how to kill this person. I saw this movie and they did it with a tire. A copycat yeah. tire killer, Colin. <laughs> Come That's on, brilliant. And fire it's a deep cut. Yeah. So yeah. This will be like uh, version two, like uh, Human Centipede two, where they're influenced by the movie. Yeah. So they do mm-hmm. it. So oh now, my god. Well, number two god. is oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Well, they do go to Hollywood, and that's spoiler. They roll on to Hollywood at the end of this movie. They're so it could get way more meta in a sequel to this movie. Yeah, mm. I, here's the thing. I take this movie as this movie is a critique of of making films in general from someone who has never made film before. Because the guy who directed this has movie he never made no, the guy who directed this movie is a like DJ house music guy. <laughs> No joke. He he scored the movie as well. All right. So, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, so so uh, yeah. he he yeah, has no filmmaking experience. But I take this as like <laughs> a like a a pretty bold critique of saying like like you think about you know the audience is being you know no matter what their criticism is they're being told they're wrong. That think about how Hollywood makes movies. Uh, even when people like Batman versus Superman kind of situation. Even people are like, we'll go see it and spend our money on it, but we think it's terrible and we're telling you why. And the studios say, fuck you, you don't know what you're talking about, and keep rolling. You know, uh, this movie's kind of a critique of like Hollywood thinks they know what what's best for you. I will show them. Even when you're telling them movie. This doesn't make any sense. Like, there's literally a part where a character says, the scene doesn't make any sense. Why are you doing this? And they tell him, don't worry about it. You know, we got to figure it out. That, you know, this is a Frenchman's critique of Hollywood movies, I guess. But the weird thing is, is that, I mean, I suppose like the analogy there or the metaphor, I suppose we're talking about, right? It's like that, like something like Cabin in the Woods, I can see it more clearly because you have the guys behind the scenes who are engineering the thing. Mm -hmm. In this one, we meet an audience who like, you know, we find out that the guy at the beginning who's talking to the camera, the camera turns around, it turns out there are people gathered here in the desert with Mm -hmm. binoculars Mm -hmm. who are going to be watching. Uh, They keep talking about it like it's a movie, but they're actually just on a hill watching the events happen. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's the characters in this who are telling the audience is like, don't worry, you know, things are happening for no reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's like the, this, uh, you know, like you were mm-hmm. saying that uh, the scene doesn't make any sense, and the characters are explaining like, just you know, yeah, bug off, man, right? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> no matter what's happening, is it a critique of filmmaking or is it a critique of? movie audience. I think it's a critique of the Hollywood machine, is what I think it is. The audience is being part of that. Yeah. Especially because the point with with the character they they call the accountant or whatever that brings them the turkey and, you know, kind of like settles the crowd and everything. To me, he's like kind of a combination of like the role of the producer where he like finds the money and finds the way to like finance it. But he's also like the MPAA. Like they're a test audience, right? Like they're test screening this movie and they're giving their feedback and he's saying, you know, fuck you, we're going to do what we want anyways, you know. So that's how I took this movie anyways, you know. Because it's almost like, I, well, maybe I had a little different interpretation. It was just it seemed that the movie was trying to say from within the movie. Like, you know, it wasn't like the creators. It was like the characters mm-hmm. within the movie were talking to you and basically saying, like, it doesn't matter what we do. You're going to watch it because it's on the – because it's happening. Right. You're going to watch it. Right. You're curious enough to be here. There's like – because the characters – uh, you know the audience characters are making it like it's boring so far. Mm-hmm. Oh, don't worry, just stick with it. It's probably yeah. gonna pick up. You know, mm-hmm. it's like they're just saying, no matter what we put in front of you, yeah. you're gonna watch it because mm-hmm. you're idiots. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So it's, it's less, a, you know. I mean, so maybe I was taking it like it's not criticizing movies. Mm-hmm. They are in love with making the movie. Right. They're just saying like the movie's gonna happen whether you are watching it or mm-hmm. not. It's right. like it lives by itself. Mm-hmm. You're an idiot for watching this. Because mm-hmm. it's about nothing. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. It's, there's yeah. nothing happening for a reason. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. The problem I'm running into is the movie, aside from interpreting what the filmmakers meant while making it, um, it the way this movie is presented it almost makes it critique proof. Because it tells you right off the bat, you're going to see things that don't make sense. Right. Exactly. So it's, it's kind of cop it, out. I was going to say, is, ah, it, is it a safeguard? Is right. It a, yeah, because they just say, "Don't worry, it's not going to make sense in certain parts." Well, then, but but I have because the brain wants to reconcile this movie, mm-hmm. so I, I have questions that I know that yeah, are like, not going to get answered. Like why? Like why? Why is he... the tire alive? Like mm-hmm. this? It's a thing that the tire See, wakes up and is alive. 
See, in this and, and world. With, and with me, I even I accept the tire without a backstory. Sure, I that's want, fine. I like I that. I want to know why nobody knows what the fuck is going on. The only two people that know this is staged is the cop and the accountant, and neither one of them actually seem to know what's happening. Right. Yeah. They think they do, but yeah. But they don't. But and they don't. Like, why, why does nobody know what's happening? Right. Well, How is this possible? But that's why I wonder if there's like a disconnect. Like there's two movies taking place here. There's the actual events of the film, which is the slasher movie involving a killer tire on right. the loose. And then there's this like meta contextual, you know, uh, critique or criticism, right. satire yeah. going right. on of movies mm-hmm. and their audience. That's and like true. That's a separate thing. So in that storyline, nobody knows what's going on. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Right, and I so that's where I'm like I don't know if there is the representative of the filmmakers unless it's just supposed to be the voice of the characters. You know what I mean? Maybe I'm searching for something that like, no, I just is think that's there, but. I think that's a symptom of a guy who's never made a movie before. I think that's what it is. I think those two movies, those two conflicting plot lines happening at the same time, is just someone inexperienced making a movie. Is what it is. I think that's why that happened because this guy can, knows nothing about making movies. You can't movies. make a movie and expect your audience to not ask why you can't right yeah. like I, I get that that's the point in the beginning with the, with the speech and everything but at some point the but, continuity has to add up right you know it has to i mean a good right. contrast for this is i mean think about demolition man last week they explained everything, everything. Yeah. exposition <laughs> is the whole script of that movie this is what happened since you last woke up you know whereas yeah. this movie could not be more different than that right. there there's there's long stretches of this movie with no dialogue at all do you oh, find yeah, movies right. more intriguing the less information the less they explain themselves or are you more satisfied by a movie like when you come away from it you're like well i know you know i can put the whole thing together in my head because it was explained to me, I saw it happen, everything made mm-hmm. sense. And then there's these other movies where, like, pieces of them are missing. So you come away and you're like, uh, you know, you got to think about it a little while and digest this. Like, how does this piece connect to each other? It's like. Well, I mean, in putting, in trying to figure out how pieces connect to each other in, uh, I'm going to say, a normal film, like, I think uh, filmmaker intent is what kind of lives in that area between mm-hmm. those two pieces. Yeah, yeah, like exactly. They'll give you this, they'll give you this. Right. And if you're in with what the filmmaker is intending to do, that's where you're able to put things together and make sense. Right. Things exactly. that they don't want to explain to you, but they give you in order to put together. Exactly. I yeah. think I think Christopher Nolan is a perfect balance of those two things. He gives you enough information mm-hmm. that you can follow the story, but there's still like gaps of information right. that Inception leave you. is a great Exa- example. Inception. Of that. Great example. The Prestige yeah. is a good example yes, of that as well. Is. Yeah, you know, um and I think that that is so delicately handled in his movies mm-hmm. because he's an experienced filmmaker. Mm-hmm. Like he yeah. can handle that kind of storytelling because he has made a shit ton of movies. Mm-hmm. Whereas this guy is a fucking musician that's yeah. like, I'm going to make a really weird movie. He hasn't yeah. figured out yeah. that you can only leave so much to the imagination right. of the audience. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I've often wondered too, like, I mean, this is, it's you know, <clears throat> I mean, probably the best surrealist that I know is David Lynch, you know, mm-hmm. and his stuff. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of times I'm watching David Lynch movies, wondering mm-hmm. if, you know, like some of the stuff that happens, is, you know, is this like a private joke or is he having one over on us, yeah. the viewing audience, right? It's like some of the stuff is absurd mm-hmm. <clears throat> where it's like that's also what this feels like. This is like an inside joke yeah. to the people who made it, mm-hmm. right? So it's like they at that kind of level of ironic detachment. It's not really a movie. It's more just the it, the whole thing is a lark, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, this yeah. is a big goof. And who can we get to go see it? Mm-hmm. There, there's more to it. Than sure. Yeah. You know, because, I mean, we're talking about it's a cr- well-crafted film. It's, right. You know, it's a beautifully shot movie. It yeah. is. It really is. It has some great shit. Like, for, like I said, for an in- inanimate object, the way it, like, it shoots, it's stalking people and animals are, is beautifully done. It's very, like, Halloween-esque. And a lot of the ways he'll come into the background of a shot and the character at the foreground doesn't notice he's there. Mm-hmm. And things like that. Things like that are really well done. I know it probably sounds like we're just, like, shitting all over this movie. But, like, there, it has really good technical aspects of it. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. the storytelling is where it kind of falls apart. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like, there's even, you know, like, oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say, like, sound-wise, production-wise, all of that is the sound great. Really yeah, wonderful. Right, and it was beautifully shot. It doesn't look like a half a million dollars. It looks like it might even be a little bit more. Like, there's some great mm-hmm. CGI special effects in this movie as well. Uh, all the all the killings were originally done as practical effects, like Tom Savini type watermelon blowing up. Sure. Yeah. But they 
but the director didn't like the way they looked on screen with the rest of the movies, so they went with CGI, which is I think it's a works. shame, but it but it works. It, works. it looks yeah. pretty seamless. So, yeah. um, but I think it, I think for especially given the budget, it looks pretty good. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, as you were saying, like mm-hmm. the things that I I thought. Some of the stuff that worked really well was that, like, first introductory segment where you're being introduced to the tire for the first time. It rolls over a, uh, <clears throat> like, a uh, plastic bottle. Plastic plastic bottle. bottle. And it's kind of, it's got this like tentative, you know, just kind of squishing, like how much does it resist and then flatten the thing. Mm -hmm. And right then, you know, everybody in the room was like, whoop, he's got a taste for it. Now it's like, so it's community, the movie's communicating in that Mm -hmm. way. We understand what just happened. It's like this thing met something that it had never seen before, realized it was stronger and more powerful and could flatten it and got enjoyment out of it. Mm -hmm. So the next thing that it goes after is the, was it the rap? No, it was. The rabbit or the the, the bottle, the scorpion. The well, scorpion, there was scorpion sorry, the and the glass creature. bottle. Yeah, so it's, it yep. mows over a scorpion, crushes mm-hmm. that thing. And then it is learning. <clears throat> it starts off learning that it is God, basically, mm-hmm. in its yeah. world. Yeah. Like, because it just woke up and like this is nothing to him. So that tire thinks it's God at that mm-hmm. point. I, n- I really never thought I'd watch a movie that had serious character development in a tire. <laughs> right. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Like, the, I think the this movie is at its best when it's just focusing on Robert the tire. Like all the audience stuff and like the sheriff stuff, like that is also tertiary for me to like. If this movie cut out a lot of that and just was more about the tire, like a like a slasher film with just mm-hmm. Robert the tire, mm-hmm. I think it would be a stronger movie all around. Mm. See, um, I, maybe, I agree, yeah. but at the same time, I really did enjoy the dialogue with like the sheriff. Mm-hmm. Well, they're the only and, people who talk. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. I know, but like it, it was it was funny. Like it, it I, I thought mm-hmm. it was funny dialogue. I thought it worked. What did you guys think about our like? Final girl, I guess you could call her Roxanne Masquieta, I think is what her name is. The was, French right? girl? Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah that was on Gossip Girl. Eyes. Yeah. I, know, I mean, you know, to contrast her and her leading man is a rubber tire. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, yeah. Right. You know, uh, as far as like an actor, you're saying like the performance. Yeah, what did you think just, about her? I didn't think she really acted all that She didn't much. have much to do. No. Yeah. So I can't really, a, I can't really judge mm-hmm. her acting. So I have seen the, her in other things, so I know that she. She can act. Mm. Right. And by the time, but she does pull off a nice little thing later. By the time, you know, like the technical jig is up later on and they're mm-hmm. meeting in the van and everything. Uh, she does a great job acting that she's a terrible actor. When yeah. She's giving the line yeah, exactly. to the mannequin at the end. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, that is like the biggest amount of dialogue that she has. It, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Right. But, I mean, she pulls it off in that stilted way, which is just the, the, the pentameter of how she's saying it. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. wrong. And it's, it's. Funny to watch it's comical, that, to, yeah. see right. that, to see her do it wrong. I enjoyed that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, she has like. I mean, I think it, it feels like that. This Quentin Depew. Mm-hmm. Depew. Depew. Yeah, Depew. that's good. Depew. Depew. Yeah. You almost just have to like forget there are letters in that word. Depew. Right. Depew. Yeah. Exactly. Depew. It feels like he's a guy who is experiencing things visually, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, so mm-hmm. he's got the idea of like, well, you got a tire, and you're going to have this good-looking girl, and somebody I think did a fan. Art or maybe it was that's the actual, real art. The actual posters, which is you know her like kind of was she that's real leaning art. up against yep. the giant tire or something, and I'm like that's the image that sells this movie mm-hmm. right there, the girl mm-hmm. and the t- the killer tire, yeah. yeah, you know. But beyond that, it's like what you know is she asked to do as an actress, you know. I mean, yeah. and it's like is there. It sets up like I suppose most serial killer movies do that you have a uh, like the the killer has a fascination with her because he passes her on the road Mm -hmm. and he's trying Mm -hmm. to stop her car and passes her and then, you know, follows her to the motel Mm -hmm. and kind of sneaks in and watches her having a shower. Mm -hmm. And then after that, he like drowns himself, right? He goes and goes to watch her swim. Yeah. 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 He watches her swim. That's what it was. And then like, you know, goes to the bottom of the pool. And then after that, it's like, I'm like, did I miss a scene where the cops recruited her because no. they knew that the tire had no. an interest in her? No, they no. didn't show that. No, they tried to entice <laughs> the tire out of a hotel room at some point by basically dressing up a mannequin to look like her. Yeah, with a voice box and a piece it of looks like her. Like they did a from pretty the, good job of mannequin. making a mannequin like, yeah, look like her. Doing? Yeah, I was like, oh. I was like why yeah. does her hair look so weird? Yeah, oh, it's yeah. Going on. <laughs> like even the shoes were the same shoes she was yeah. wearing. Like they did a really good job. Yeah. Speaking of a uh, out uh, uh, video. Box art. Um, so we've got the we've got the DVD in front of us, and it's got like a lenticular cover. It's it's uh, it's fine, right? But for those who don't know what uh, lenticular means, 
<laughs> there you go. Three holograms. Right yeah. There. there you go. <clears throat> That's what so, the means to me. Pretty much every country had different poster art for this movie. Um, and a lot, every single one, except for the official DVD art in America, was wildly more interesting for this movie. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, so I've got I've got four of them here. So this one was the original French one, and they all look very like grindhousey. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they look they they are infinitely more interesting than the American one. Yeah, I don't know why what it is with uh, distributors and deciding their cover art for right. stuff because they make them look terrible. Like right. at this point, exactly. Anything that comes out like this always makes it lo- it makes right. it look cheap. And it just doesn't make it look as interesting. Like these covers you're mm-hmm. showing us right yep. now, they're like sell painted, it. Uh, yeah, right. You know, they like, sell it more to me. Yeah, that's the one, right? Then okay. this, this, this is my favorite one. Yeah. I love this yeah. one. Was yeah. That was the American. Yep, theatrical. those. Yeah, that's but it's never made it to the DVD I cover, know. though. Yeah, Why is this not the DVD cover? This cover. It's the most generic, basic. Right. Also, this movie has some of the best fucking taglines I've ever read for a movie. Right. So the DVD we've got in front of us says, "Careful where you tread." This nah. one, this one I have in front of me says, "Are you tired of the expected?" <laughs> <laughs> and then this one has a poll quote, which I don't know who this is from, but it says, "The best killer tire movie you'll ever see." <laughs> That's fair. Right. Yeah, That's fair. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. It's, it's it's a shame we didn't get all this artwork. Yeah, uh, you know, on on TV or even like a Blu-ray, make a deluxe Blu-ray with this fancy artwork. You know, this, this is uh, those crazy official boring. artwork. All or, official. I wonder mm-hmm. why they can't pull some of that to be widely distributed. I I gotta imagine it's too for they can get it for the artists to make this work for. Um, a certain amount of money to be displayed, right. but they to have it be the cover of a DVD for the rest of its life. Right. I can't imagine that they can afford for some reason, or that, it seems to me well, there's got to be a reason why they right. go with this. That's your marketing department. This is the yep. image that best sells it to your target audience. But That's, at the same time, it, yes so. and no, because it's That's a tire. The there's audience. so much you can do with it. You know, it's so simple. You can do it. Like when I went, I saw this movie in theaters. When I went and saw it in theaters, this was the what? poster. This was the poster I saw. <laughs> this was the poster at the theater when I went, and I was like, "Fuck yeah!" So like, yeah. It, it could go with this grindhouse it poster. Really you know, it's uh, you know, it's it was a piece great of modern art. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's uh, really it's unfortunate very, uh, that marketing killed there. this. You know, yeah. Because when I worked at Barnes and Noble in the movie and you know music department this was on my recommend shelf for years and i would constantly <laughs> see people pick it up and like be like oh 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 it looks interesting and then put it back down and i was like if this had the fucking grindhouse art people would be buying this shit up like crazy so you're you saying know? maybe by having a literal tire on the front of the video box that it's too off put like you're like it's a movie about a killer tire right i'm not gonna watch this too to the, the point theatrical art is mm-hmm. like a little more abstract <clears throat> yeah a little more like, interesting yeah hey, there might be is a she, tire is the it? tire that big that she's leaning against is that what's going on in right. this movie there's yeah. questions with this there's no questions mm-hmm. like well, oh I can see exactly what it is and this lenticular art implies that he kills this like fucking bird on the yeah. road right mm-hmm. so like you're like it, that gives away too much I think on the front already yeah, you know so. it's just we'll have to post that uh that, oh, yeah, we'll, post, that poster that we're talking about all the, the different art yeah. it's the minimalist one that we're talking about the black and white it's and fantastic. red with the with tire the with the eyeball mm-hmm. you gotta yeah. subscribe yeah. to us on Facebook you yep. do yep facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show there you go and we'll post a selection of all these uh, posters this week mm-hmm. so alright so going back to I mean basically I think we've covered in some manner Pretty much. like the actual plot of the movie so now jumping back over to the B story the audience. The audience. Uh, mm-hmm. Okay. So there's like a plot happening here. Mm-hmm. Is there a plot? I don't know. There's it's threads it's... of a plot. Okay. There are, there's the start of a plot. strings. <laughs> that never finishes. This is where our biggest movie star is in the- uh, Charlie Coons? <laughs> Kidding. Wings <laughs> Hauser. The star I was going to say, I was going to say Eden Cohen from Gilmore <laughs> yeah. Girls is what I was going to say. Yeah. 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 yeah Glenn well, from Gilmore well, Girls is well, well, the yeah. ones we know yeah. people from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're all like part of this- uh, gaggle sitting up on the mountaintop. So, I mean, as they're trying to explain this stuff to us, I suppose there's also like the characters of the um, the guy who owns the motel. There's the cleaning lady son, mm-hmm. victim yeah, the in the hotel. Lady. Yeah. Um, but at some point, like all these, so these people show up to see a quote unquote movie. The movie is going to last in their time for hours, and. Days. Days. Or yeah. days, I suppose, right? Because they sleep out there in the desert and they're always complaining that they don't have any food. And so at some point, the accountant character, mm-hmm. <clears throat> he sleeps mm-hmm. back in his motel room, gets a phone call from the master. Mm-hmm. 
Who oh, yeah, says, I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> yes, that, that's for me, too. What the fuck? I think that's <laughs> just, like, the the producer who's, like, producing the film. The uh, film. He, he, you know. That's, like, the devil or something, yeah. right? I mean, right, yeah. The, the well, you special. saw that kit he opened up and had all the instruments in it, you know, in the yeah. hotel room before he killed that turkey and poisoned it. Like, oh, he, had, like, yeah, a, he had, like, a fucking briefcase full of weapons, you know? That was the, the, the I guess, yeah, the, the way that the shot sequence was laid out. It's him talking on the phone, and then the wide shot revealing while he's on the phone there's a turkey in the room, and I'm like... All right, this is like one of those white buffalo or white horse things, mm-hmm. you know, twin peaks Ooh, like or, Hall- or Halloween too. Or Halloween. <laughs> You're just being weird yeah. for the sake of being weird, aren't yeah. you? Yeah. But it turns out that's the turkey that he's supposed to kill and then deliver or cook this thing and deliver it to the uh, the audience. What did he cook it in? That's what a I was deep wondering. Fire that he had in the for no reason. That for no reason happened that way. Yeah, okay. no reason. Yeah. yeah. That's See, the, this is, that, is that, the alien yeah. is like the ultimate no cop reason. out. Right? It really it is. It is. Yeah. It is. Every, the uh, things he's saying is like, there's a reason for that. Yeah. <laughs> there's a reason. Yeah. I, 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 okay. His speech in the beginning about his examples for no reason are not great examples. Mm. Like, I've always had an issue no, with that. Like, they aren't. When he and talks, I don't know if they're doing that on purpose. Yeah. It, that's the thing. That, that's always irked me because, like, when he talks about how, like, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre one is the one that bothers me the most yeah. because he talks about how, like, we never see them go to the bathroom and it's for no reason. No, it's, no, there is a reason. The reason is we don't need to see it that's right, the right. reason and for it re- and you know other examples yeah. you mentioned that there is a reason yeah why exactly why is et brown why, why does the yeah. pianist hide well he's it's fucking war-torn poland <laughs> exactly at this point. he's hiding for a reason yeah. Yeah. so he doesn't die like i feel like all of us with our knowledge could write better examples right. I, yeah, like right I, now right. you know than what I, that movie I had i don't know I, that's the thing i don't know if the filmmaker is being funny at this point trying to be funny and giving us examples of things where he says there's no reason but there is obviously a reason mm-hmm. or he's right. just doing bad no reasons he did not correctly identify the texas chainsaw massacre yeah he said the wonderful the texas or the something. chainsaw the massacre. excellent chainsaw massacre it's just yeah that bothered me i'm just like it's was, not uh, there wasn't a rights thing because they said et and they said you know yeah, yeah. everything mm-hmm. Else, so yeah. yeah, that's weird. So I don't, yeah, I don't know if he's being serious in those or if he's fucking with us. Yeah, yeah, that that's, bothered me. That's always I, bothered me too. I agree. Or with is that. he just he just doesn't have that knowledge? You know yeah, what I mean? Like, he's he's the just... actor screwing up. Who knows? They're most uh-huh. definitely fucking with us. Yeah, I mean, like that's the whole point. Point of I'm, I suppose that's why you're supposed to get enjoyment out of the movie, right? It's going to be. This kind of unspoken or spoken thing on their part that yeah. we're gonna mm-hmm. fuck with you, the audience, for the entire duration. I mean, we are going to watch a killer entire movie, right? right. Yeah. So yeah. They, they are but fucking with us. But it's funny because seriously, like I said earlier, watching it. Everything about the tire, I fully accept without question. It's right. all the other subplot that I have questions. Right. I agree. Like that yeah. Is, yeah, yeah. The, the random killing tire yes. is the most believable part of this movie. Yeah, yes. exactly. Exactly. Damn, it's it's basically like you take Michael Myers and make him a tire. That's like all his scenes in this movie are really because similar to that. Why not? Am I right? Why not? Yeah, why not? <laughs> why not? <laughs> hey, you know what? I've watched a movie called Surf Nazis Must Die. Oh, I've after, seen that. After I watch that, anything's possible. That's, you know, so I don't question a tire killing people. You know, there's so many, so many B and C movies out there with ridiculous premises that right. the I'm only in for your high concept thing. Yeah. It's just yeah. like, oh, yeah. just doing this. All right, go for it. Yeah, I'm fine. The only thing that makes this, you know, stand out is that it's at a time period where people aren't interested in movies like that. If this came out in the seventies or the eighties, this would have fit right in with all those, you know, trauma type movies. Well, this would have been like a midnight movie like the mm-hmm. old Topos or the eraser heads or something exactly. like that. I mean yeah. that's why it's kind of cool that people are still given half a million dollars to go off and pursue something that's completely off the wall yeah. and out there like this. You know, I'm right. just surprised it wasn't Michelin. That's all. Right. Well, it's that's uh, we you know, it was the we were talking during the movie, this is a magnet. Uh, film release yes and for a while there magnet was trying to like build some capital by releasing specifically horror movies and uh you know like fantastic films right mm-hmm. i don't even know what they're doing now to tell you the truth i know they're still releasing stuff but yeah it's like but now it's very moved into right high cal- caliber dramas right. and, or something like and that it seems like it's very few and far between like they're placing right. their specific bets on the movies they're releasing mm-hmm. it feels like because i don't hear right. about them as much anymore like we said during watching the movie, A24 is the one who's mm-hmm. busting everything. Right. Out. 
Yeah. It's funny how, like, movie companies, like these little distributors, kind of right. go in these cycles where they yeah. all get their start in horror films. Mm-hmm. Sure. Because they must like you go said, that's how you make their the money. That's American right. film market or con or something like that. And they buy these, they see these things and they buy them up. Mm-hmm. And then they start putting them out. And then they get, you know, enough of a cachet to them that filmmakers actually start saying, you know, it'd be really cool if I can get the magnet logo on the front of my movie. So you go to magnet to see if you mm-hmm. can distribute troll hunter or whatever right. you, know, you have coming out. And then at some point the bubble bursts. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. When is some... a 24 going to give us something bad? Ooh. Something that's just going to be like, Ooh, well, what it's, not, it's not bad. It's, not bad. it's just it's that just... they eventually become successful and want to move into, you know, distributing right. uh higher end product. Sure. And then they leave the horror uh, audience behind. Well, they won a they, they won a Best Picture yeah, Oscar best this year, Oscar. so they probably peaked. Yeah, so, peaked. yeah, that's, that's yeah. The, probably the moment that announces the mm-hmm. downfall. Yeah. Then we're going to be off to something. You know, somebody else will be around next year. Yeah, yeah. Gotta but keep your eye on Sundance. Yeah. So, not to go back to the video box art too much, but I forgot to show you guys. Did you guys see what the DVD looks like? It's pretty great. Ah, it's it's just a. It, it looks exactly like a tire. Else, I would. Be yeah. Severely yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Really it's great. It's yeah. pretty. Yeah. It's pretty great. At a certain point, there's certain things you have to do. Exactly. Like, I mean, at least marketing didn't fuck that up, right? Yeah. You know. Like. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And with the uh, spoke hole in it, there it kind of makes it look like an. Eye oh. Yeah. Like, bravo. <laughs> yeah. See. Okay. They did well. Yeah. On that. They did that. Bravo. So this movie, okay, I might be reading too much into it, but I'm pretty sure this movie. I think we've done that. At this yeah, point. yeah. Well, you have to. Yeah, right. I mean, right. I mean that's what we. That's yeah. what we want to do. I'm I'm like 90 percent certain. I've seen this movie a couple times now. That this movie contains a reference to like a horror movie. I will probably make you all watch at some point. That is very near and dear to my heart. A uh, funny games. I'm pretty sure there's a uh. reference to funny games in this movie. There's a part where rubber. Kill like after he goes on his uh, like three day killing spree when he snaps after seeing the genocide of his people in the big tire fire, which was a great scene. Yes, um, bravo. Uh, we see him in a hotel room and he's watching NASCAR on a TV and there's mm-hmm. a there's a body with its head blown off next to him. Yeah. There's a scene in Funny Games. Oh, you're gonna ruin it. It's no, no, it's not a spoiler. Um, where. A character is watching NASCAR, and there is a body with its head blown off. And that is a French uh, film. And I like so is you that, know, I was it's a French. Ask, is it's that a French the one film. you're talking about, not the American remake. I, the, well, they're, they're exactly, exactly right? the same. They're yeah, shot right. for shot the same. Yeah. So, um, but they're, they're watching NASCAR on a very similar TV. Mm-hmm. It's shot the same way. So I like to believe it's a reference to a movie I really love. Um, it's yeah, almost maybe. too coincidental to not be a reference sure. at this point, but it's a really deep cut right. because that's one scene in that in a very strange movie. Right. So you know, plus yeah. I mean it's NASCAR like that. Yeah, that kind of drives it home that they are references. Yeah, exactly, things. exactly. So I I love that scene just for the fact that it's making this nod to this other movie that not a lot of people have seen that I love so much. So. Yeah, so there were references somebody... to other movies throughout it. That I got I, not that I, got I picked the up the omen on. at the end. Because of the tricycle, yeah, yeah. <laughs> at some point, that was amusing. I mean, again, it was subverting the expectations. You have like the one uh, surviving um, audience spectator, mm-hmm. right? He's out there, and he's like, "You got to have more action or something here." And the sheriff just like, "Fuck it, I'm going to go in there and blast the goddamn tire apart <laughs> with a shotgun," which he does and brings the thing out yeah. and drops it in front of him. And then the thing, you know, comes back out as a uh, reincarnated. Hey, wait, he's reincarnated as a tricycle. Yeah, <laughs> that's that the was best funny. line of the movie. That was funny. <laughs> <laughs> Which is just like what the hell? Yeah, that's right. They also there was a moment there where they well, we talked about they poison the the master has the account poison the audience. Yeah, yeah. so they kill the audience. Yeah, mm-hmm. the idea is if you kill the audience, then all the players who aren't players are just the characters mm-hmm. can stop putting on this farce and go home or something, right? But because he survived, it's like shit. Forget yeah, everything keep, I just said. Yeah, <laughs> that like if 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 it was a more I don't know like it almost seems this fourth wall kind of well it almost it? feels like if the message would be the the contempt that filmmakers not or even like the people in charge of distributing films who hear all the comments about their movies have the contempt for their audience that they would just want to kill them and go home at some point yeah. you know what I mean right the movie like, will exist even without you being right just yeah just yeah. shut up I'm tired of you guys complaining about everything yeah and this problem it's the stuff. DC movie effect just yeah kill you and go home <laughs> I don't want to yeah. hear this anymore 
But yeah, I don't. Exactly. But it doesn't. I don't know where he. I don't know where he's. The filmmaker is getting that motivation. Considering, I mean, this is his first movie. Unless he just knows of. He's people. He's someone like us who's like sees all the problems happening in so. Hollywood and is like, I'm gonna fucking point it all out to you in my movie. What if I told you this wasn't his first movie? It's not. It's not. It isn't. Apparently, this is Colin's thing. He's just got his one little <laughs> uh, trick. Yep. What? This is Colin's corner. Well, He's got his one little ha ha. Does it say for, from first time filmmaker? He has no, a story of some film that he made prior to this. He like made a several, I think. One was or it two? a short film or maybe? Okay, well maybe. that's that's, that's a little fun. different. But he said that he went to see his films in a theater with people, and like you know, there'd be fifteen people in the theater, and twelve of them would get up and leave before the uh, show was over. Okay, he, he has contempt for one his time. Life. Yes, he <laughs> went into a theater where his movie was playing, and there, he was the only one there. He has contempt and for his movie yep. was playing. Without an audience, this makes um, more sense. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna. I'm, oh, Which is so now. Weird. Now he's got a fucking chip on his shoulder. Yeah. Right. This, this changes, time. Colin. Where were you at the beginning of this? <laughs> yeah. Well, because you gotta, you know, get uh, out what the you think the movie is. It's like he's making his own movie in this podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the twist ending, the twist. directed yeah. by M Night God Shyamalan. Damn it. <laughs> oh. oh, how mad would you guys have been at that popped down at the end if it was like produced by M Night Shyamalan or something? <laughs> oh, would you guys have been like, what the fuck? Jason Blum Blumhouse was in on this. Or something. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, it just kind of. I think there was. So that colored my. This is the second time I've seen this movie. Mm -hmm. The first time I read it differently because you're intrigued. You don't know what's right. going on. Yeah. The second time, like, you know, knowing what was coming, and I was more struck by the story of the audience right. this time around and i had read that anecdote and i'm like this movie has contempt for me sitting here watching it yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's what this thing yes. is mm -hmm. it's like fuck you i'm gonna put whatever i want on the screen and be as ridiculous as possible i'm gonna tell you up front that there's no reason or explanation for right. anything that i'm going to do and you're gonna watch you'll it you'll see it because it's a killer tire movie yep what a fucking god hit. damn it <laughs> <laughs> wow. Son of a bitch. <laughs> I think it's admirable to make the movie you want to make and say fuck everybody else. I think yeah, that's very true. You know, I mean, it's definitely a one of a kind, yeah, you know, like experience. Is it? I mean, I guess you have to say that it's an artistic experience only in that the, you know, I mean, you know, we're reading into it and this is what you're supposed to do with yeah. films, I think, is the, uh, you know, you're bringing something to it, you know, and trying to interpret the symbols, mm -hmm. and yes. they, you know. Yeah. So. I, just, I don't know yeah. if you're, but if you're making a film with a budget for a, a company with like, you have to be making it for other people. I, mean, I don't think he a, did, though. It's an acquisition. I think this America. was all, yeah. Bought up post and post uh, by Magnet. I think he made this on his own and then, like, like you know, it was optioned out after that. But you're still talking about a, you know, I mean, obviously there's financiers involved. Like, that's, you know, at yeah. this yeah. level, right? Like, Somehow he convinced, based on the previous experience of films that he's made, say, you know, I'm going to make this thing and I explain it to the financiers. This is what I'm going to do. And they agree to give him the film, the money to, to make it. So, you know, in that like, regard, it's like you're not really making it for another audience, except the investor assumes that they're going to make some money off of it mm -hmm. just based on the premise and probably that poster art. Mm -hmm. alone. Which was all it's great. Like, it was all fantastic poster art. Seriously, cannot express how disappointed I am in this fucking DVD <laughs> art. I just, I just feel like if you're going to make a film with the intent of other people to see it, you can't have such a big fuck you. I think... Mm. I think, I think you can. Yeah, yeah. I think you can. I, the why, I mean, what? I guess that's the question we ask. What are the reasons why you can't? Because it's a dick move. <laughs> but you're saying that that'll make the movie anti-commercial? Like, if you're saying that if it's making a comment on the audience and the audience won't show up to see it, in which case they won't be financial but financially But that's not the message that's bringing the audience in. <clears throat> Right, because the audience doesn't right. see that on the surface. This is a movie about this is well, I mean, is it subtext or uh, it's over, it's over pretty it, much but, text. It's yeah. just it's just text, <laughs> no subtext. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, like, yeah. Yeah. it's drawing you in yeah. as the high concept of killer tire. Movie. Yes, mm -hmm. so you're gonna go see it because of that, and then it's got like this, you know, thing that it's presenting to you after the fact. But yeah, it is kind of like you've been invited to a party where they're going to insult you. A roast? Uh, yeah. It's, din it's dinner for schmucks. That's what <laughs> yeah. it is. Oh, yeah. This movie yep. is dinner for schmucks. <laughs> yeah. But you can enjoy that because you don't take it personally because you're, you know, kind of, uh, 
a hipster type where it's ironic. And, no. ah, I appreciate original storytelling. So even if it's making fun of me, at least you wrote an original story. No, no, no. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. In uh, you know, what was it like? Like seventy percent of movies that came out last year were either adapted from source material or remakes or reboots yeah. or something like that. Yeah. You know. So I appreciate yeah, original too. content, Definitely. even if it's not great. Yeah. At least you gave it a shot. That's that's basically how I sum up my opinion about Jupiter Ascending. Wasn't great, but at least you wrote something original. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I get it. I yeah. mean, eventually, it's like what well, you say. You know, at uh, some point, there were movies that uh, we had on here that I would leave with the tag. Like, this is a movie for adventurous filmmakers or for adventurous moviegoers. It's like for sure. at some point when you've seen all the Transformers that you can take, <laughs> and they're Ill- which is one, so which is one, yeah, yeah. 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 So the, the first one, okay, yeah, that's us. Right. We're saying, but the, yes. uh, the the average filmmaker or moviegoer, I think, has seen all four. Oh, soon to be five. There's, there's, I think there's five. Soon to be six, isn't there? Yeah, had, yeah. yeah there's only them out. about the. We had the uh, class come through and yeah. we were asking them, and they said like their favorite. Uh, yeah. And you yeah. felt your soul yeah. die. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel a little bit. I mean, what they were ten or you know twelve. That's no excuse. But it was like that's okay, <laughs> that's really not an excuse. I think they yeah. were eighth grade. Pal. I can't. <laughs> How old are you in eighth grade? Like fourteen. Okay, yeah. they were fourteen. So years okay, old. they should they should have developed taste by then. <laughs> okay, I can. Or at least them, starting to develop have, taste. They developed it for the Transformers. All right, movie. I'll give them a pass. I didn't develop taste until yeah. later. I was a late bloomer as far as taste goes. Yeah, me too. Like there was I'm, a college class where they're like, bring in one of your favorite films and explain, you know, why you like. And what was this. yours? It's fucking Pirates of the Caribbean, Curse of the Black Girl. <laughs> Shut <laughs> but, up. But that's the first one, so that's it fine. First that's the first good. one's good. It but like, if it was like the third or fourth but, one, that's a problem. But, everybody right. else but comparatively like, yeah. to everybody uh, else, people crime, brought in pie. Yeah. Oh, wow. And, and yeah. I'm just like, I like this movie. Uh, <laughs> he's a queen in this shot, and he's pretty funny. Mm. Yeah, but sometimes fuck those people. I but, mean, like, but yeah, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but again, because but, sometimes you can have big bombastic yes. shit. Yeah, you sometimes at, like, you the can. Dark Knight, right? Yeah. I mean, right. It's a big oh. budget or Logan. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> Logan. Those yeah, are Logan. like right. you know, there's more on their mind than just entertaining yes. you. Which I guess is the thing. This right. movie you can do is, that. You can be big, entertaining, yeah. and then keep. You know, it yeah. is trying to entertain you, mm-hmm. and it is trying to like, you know, get some subversive yes uh, mm-hmm. message mm-hmm. across. It there is as indeed. Well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thanks yeah. to Colin's big reveal. Yeah, we now know more. Yeah. <laughs> Why was that like this that? guy definitely does like fancy himself as like a David Lynch or Christopher Nolan, and oh, he's he really definitely does. not <laughs> on that level. Like, well, where would we have been without? I mean, that's the thing. Like, I mean. The only reason that I think that you can get away with that type of stuff, the imagery, where it's mm-hmm. like disconnected, you know, guy, mm-hmm. you know, car pulls up, and you're like, what the fuck? And then the Let's main character the gets out of a trunk, mm-hmm. you know, and grabs a glass of, like, hands a yeah. guy, uh, you know, his sunglasses and gets a glass of water in return, just pours that out. You know, like, that kind of shit, like, comes from, I mean, I guess there was, what, like, Louis Bunel was doing stuff mm-hmm. in maybe, like, the 60s. It's like experimental film, I mm-hmm. suppose, right? It's like, how can we arrange the images mm-hmm. and still kind of, you know, beyond, like, a narrative thing, create mm-hmm. some kind of, uh, like, mood or association mm-hmm. in the mind of the person watching it that, like, you know, because you go to a movie assuming that, like, things occur in narrative uh, mm-hmm. linear order with a narrative where it's like I can follow a story from point A to point B. This is the mm-hmm. story of the guy who woke up in the morning, you know, went to the refrigerator and the eggs fall on the floor or whatever. It's like you mm-hmm. see all that in those steps. Yeah. And surrealism works in like this other way where it's, you know, using symbols to try and excite something in your imagination right. or unconscious. Yeah. Or at least make something off about what you're watching. Because you can still have the like – a character, uh, the basic steps of it, a character gets out and is talking to you. But he, things are happening, like, just on the edges of what he's doing that is, like, extra to it. Like, again, he got out of a trunk. He's got the glass of water. Uh, just the odd moments that happen around what is kind of driving through the middle of the movie. I have a question for you. I know you've seen this a couple of times, so I don't know. If four it, times. Four, four times. How long? So the the concept of it, right, and the set, all this setup that we've talked about mm. how long did it maintain your interest i mean because you know you hear like something somebody will say like it's a one joke movie or something where the joke is it's a killer tire and like yep. it's trying to tell 80 minutes well this one has a couple of different um mm-hmm. you know tax but it's like how long did that did it maintain its like on that level of you right because how long can you keep telling jokes on that you know uh mm-hmm. 
path. Yeah. Maybe until it went into the pool. Yeah, I agree. I think the pool is where That's I'm when just it like, drops right, off what for are me. we what's what are we doing? I think it's the pool where the tires is hanging out doing nothing. Because at that point, the one thing that you're kind of the most interesting thing is watching a fucking live tire doing its thing, and at a certain point, it just decides to uh, hang out at the bottom of a pool. I mean, like the graduate. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! I just I was actually just thinking like might be thinking too much about that. Maybe it's like Halloween where he gets shot and is in the bottom of the pool, the empty pool in Halloween, <laughs> and then he gets up and he's. Well, well, that's what it is because thinking too Matt's... thinking more about this than the director did. Whoa, I think yeah, you know right, <laughs> but but when he's in the pool, that's the switch to something. The sheriff. And, that's the switch yeah, to the yeah. sheriff. Something mm-hmm. else is happening. Right. Yeah. That's where we go to that. So it uh, drops off on one, but it picks up on another and keeps going with that. So I think their intent was to. Um, pick you up on that and keep you more interested with, hey, now this is going on. Something is going on that we'll never be clear yeah. about technically. But- it, it was basically just so you weren't thinking, well, what's the tire doing? Right. It's at the right. Pool, at bottom of the pool. Right. But now we have other characters who are yeah. doing something and getting shot. Like the, 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 the level that they're on is that they can pull out a gun and shoot the sheriff. It's like Westworld. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Which again, it's this just, is done in a demonstration, right? Like, of like, like none it's of not this really is real. real. Yeah. Shoot me with a gun. But Go ahead. Why don't they know it's real? Why don't they know it's real? Because they're characters in a story. Why yeah. Isn't it's Westworld. Real? He knows. Yeah. I don't. Know I know. Right. Yeah. Because it's Westworld. Why? It's <laughs> like you've got one person that's the director of the whole thing, you know, and then everyone else is just the pawns in the story. And they'll never uh, explain. Spe- never the specific well, he's the authority figure, mm-hmm. also right. as being the sheriff. Right. It's mm-hmm. like he's talking to his men. Right. But yeah. specifics are never involved in this movie. Specifics mm-hmm. are just like outlawed as far as, you know, uh, the rules of a world. There are no mm-hmm. rules at this point. Specifics are gone. Mm-hmm. He yeah. can get shot and it's just yeah, cause what's then happening. Because he, then he's like, go ahead and go over and right. slap that corpse. And they're like, no, she's dead. And right. he's like, oh, fuck. Yeah, but that yeah. interrupts what's happening, mm-hmm. which With is weird. Tire, like, yeah. yeah, because is he expecting, like the tire is alive. Mm-hmm. Like there is yeah. a live tire. Like so, what he has is, to eat and drink. He's like a right. yeah. So we see is, him yeah do all of that. Why is the why is that disturbing their world where they can get shot and not die? The fact that the tire is killing people. Exactly. Why is that? I think I, ser- I seriously up? think it's like a Westworld situation where they have this narrative that they're sticking to, and that, that as long as there's an audience, they have to stick but, to that narrative. But do they not know that the tire can disrupt? That narrative I think that and do what it wants? I think once again, it's like Westworld where the tire has gone outside of his story, right? Okay. So he's actually killing people now instead of playing the part of well, killing. See, now people. that just makes me wonder what was the tire's story supposed yeah, know, to be? Where, I th- why was, what was he there? Supposed- what was I don't the know. Movie they were supposed to be seeing. But the tire starts killing the audience members. It's, it's some. I mean, not only has mm-hmm. like you know the the master, right, poisoned right. his own audience so they can get out of there. The tire itself, when that fails, the tire's killing like you know the audience members outside of the narrative, right, of the movie. I do love the the rundown scene of Sheriff being like, "This is our suspect," and like t- like he pointing to a tire. tire. It took so yeah. long to take that tire off yeah. the rim and everything. I know. And then he and then the just other pointed to the car. And the other officers like, "Is it black?" You know, it's like asking the most. <laughs> but like that scene, that's to, funny. Yeah, to me that was real. That was could yeah. be white wall. Yeah, yeah to know. me that was like the most effective comedy in the movie yeah. was that scene because it seemed it almost it seemed w- like <laughs> Reno nine one one ish type humor. Yeah, yeah. like yeah, yeah. But yeah. This is one yeah. that actually to me seemed to actually go toward more of the Reno. The rest yeah. of it was like. Again, this is another like David Lynch thing. It's the deadpan uh, delivery, right. like deadpan comedy, where it's funny, but we're not acknowledge, we're not tipping our hands, to, we're not telling a joke. Right. It's just either we're it, the joke is that we're going to say it with such absolute seriousness that yeah. you're not sure if you're supposed to laugh or not. Yeah. In this, it's like, well, but it's absurd, right? Yes. You're dealing, yeah, yeah that right kind of stuff. The yeah. deadpan. Yeah, I like that, that that was like the one time that he decided to like seriously take up the like mantle of being a cop. And, it, you know, this is like the, the, the hill he's going to die on. You know, yeah. like I thought that was that scene. He was great. And, you know, the fact that like he has all this information and like everyone on his team is like a fucking idiot and right. can't you yeah. know, that's where they grasp what he's trying to tell you. Movie. Yeah, that's as yeah. broad as right. they get. Yeah. I think. yeah, that's I guess, what yeah. it goes through that broader. Yeah. And Michael Parks. Yeah, Michael. Uh, no, his name's not Michael Parks. Is it Michael Parks? It's something Parks. Oh, he's his son. Is it James? It's something. Is it his son? Michael There's a Parks lot of tertiary right? actors in this movie. Yeah, yeah. Michael Parks yeah. though. 
Michael Parks is the guy in, in Red the, State. The, yeah, yeah, all and the, Quentin Tarantino. Quentin Tarantino yep. movies. But this, this is his kid. Oh, this is his kid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. It's like James Parks. It's some yeah. Parks. Yeah. Like yeah. That, yeah. I didn't know it was yeah. his kid though. Good to know. Yeah. If only Michael Parks had been in this movie, that'd been great. If he would have <laughs> right? been the sheriff, if he been the sheriff, holy shit, that would have been awesome. But that, maybe that gives too much legitimacy to what's probably happening in the movie. This movie, I think, would fall apart a lot more if it had recognizable people in it. I think so. Yeah. It had Wings Hauser. It had, it had Charlie mm-hmm. Coons. Yeah. Of it, CSI Cyber. Co- Ethan Cohen. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Awesome. Well, I just want to put out there I don't like CSI Cyber. I just, I know I brought it up because I know I'm from that. I don't like, I don't, I don't like that. He's also from Community. But okay. Okay. Yeah. He's from Community. Yeah, I, I know okay, him from you Community. Like it, listener, that's yep. fine. I worked at a TV, st- I work at a TV station that had played works? that show. Or, play no, it? I work. <laughs> but I, I used to have to watch the show. I was right. forced. Do we have any uh, further uh, observations about rubber before we go to mailbag and our final wrap ups? Does everybody here love rubber? Hate it? Does the group like Splinter? We don't know. Are we going to leave it very vague and for yeah. you to decide? Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Are we just going to say no reason for all of our yeah, reviews? Yeah. No, there's no, no, no reason. reason. Yeah. To like this movie. Yeah. Oh, mm. I love, let's. Uh, Zinga. Yes. Yeah. Right. So, first of all, we're going to summon Igor, who's going to bring us our mail. Igor. Yeah. You can't even say his name. Right? So the drink is getting to my head. Igor. Igor, where are you, sir? Masters. Masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising. Rising. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. Should we get a tire for him to play with? He has a tire swing up back. <laughs> He does. does yeah. Is the tire swing the same, Robert? He can't reach think? it, though, because he's got that chain around <laughs> yeah. the tree, yeah. so he's always... Oh, no, it's like, out eh. back. He yeah. Can't, he can't use it. He can just see it. He's he like, can just uh, see it. Uh, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. It's not safe for him. No. Sure. Yeah. All right. So, if you... Oh, by the way, if you want to write in and talk to us, which we recommend you do, we'd <laughs> love to do. hear from you. Please uh, write into us on fi- uh, Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Or by email... Saturday Night Freak Show at yahoo.com. Yay. And we'll read your comments Yay, on the we air. did it! <laughs> uh, so first of all, about rubber, Chris Huddleston writes in. Hi, Chris. Hey. And says, wow, this should be an interesting discussion. I saw it <laughs> upon its initial release and thought it was pretty good. Definitely unique. Yeah, man. Very I agree. Good. Nick Hammond writes in and said, seen Hi, this a while ago and thought it was awesome. About leprechaun. <laughs> uh, I like I like how you end those short ones on the high. Well, yeah. it's like, it's 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 awesome. And there's like, oh shit, there's an exclamation oh, mark. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so about leprechaun, Dom Cree writes in and Dom. says, uh, he would like to add that Colin seems to have way too much knowledge about pro wrestling well, because about Hornswoggle. <laughs> and, uh, I don't think Colin has any knowledge. No, yeah. not at all. I, was like, I think yeah. he and shot him. Yeah, I, would say, I, I, think, I, know, I right? think, yeah, I the both of you. Because I was like, yeah, Hornswoggle. He's in the side. I have no idea who that is. Yeah. But, no, uh, it's like, no, you two definitely we'll, we'll talk, got that yeah, corner. Say, I'll get that. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll start a wrestling podcast. Well, there, says, there you go. He says that's not a bad thing at all, but he wants to know when we're getting a review of The Wrestler. Uh, he'd recommend other wrestling themed movies, but they're all crap except for maybe pro wrestlers versus zombies. You have to be kidding me, Z- Dom. Is oh, that a wow. real movie? So we have just revealed Dom's love of professional wrestling. I guess wow. so. <sighs> okay. Aronofsky movies are a lot to tackle. The wrestler's yeah. not really a freak it's show. Not a no, freak show it's, movie. it's like a real it's Oscar movie. bait. It's a, yeah, it's we'll Oscar just bait. Say so. that, uh, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I like the wrestler. I, I did too. I like the wrestler. Uh, I think um, just a side note here: if you watch the wrestler and then watch um, Black Swan. Yeah. After that, um, there are parallel movies. They really they, are. Um, it, yeah, Black Swan is the female version of the wrestler. Yeah, they are the same movie but different more gender perspectives. Oh, yeah. like Black a Swan movie. is so That's good. The way to go. it's, um, it's one of my favorite. See, I think Aronofsky was like didn't. I don't know if he intended. To, I hope he intended to do it because it's genius. But yeah, they. I think together as like parallel movies, they are they, better than yeah. independently. They mirror each other. Yeah, they for mirror sure. each other yeah. perfectly. Right. So Double watch them both. Yeah, the wrestler and then watch Black Swan, and you Black will see Swan lots of parallels. Is one of my all-time favorite movies. Yeah. I love it so mm-hmm. much. Uh, Bobette Georgie writes in and Bobette. says, uh, "My favorite Leprechaun sequel was Back to the Hood, but I also yeah! liked, <laughs> also like Leprechaun Two. I hated Space and have not seen Origins. You got to yeah. right, Bobette. Someone else is giving love <laughs> right? to the Hood. Finally, the yes, hood. really two, two's. No, they're all the Hood bad. ones are good. 
Three is better. Ryan Burrett writes in and says, well, says, Leprechaun is a great movie. Oh. Uh, nah. You wrote this before you listened yeah. to our podcast, yep. didn't you? Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you did. And I want to give a special shout out to Patrick Hilton, Poindexter the second, for liking a bunch of posts on our web star. <laughs> So Same thing yeah. happens, thank folks. You. If you like a bunch of shit, we'll mention well, it. Yeah. It was amazing. I was getting alerts like, you know, like, 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 thanks, man. Like, that's a guy who just discovered us. Is like, oh shit, yep. I All like the this back stuff. stuff. So All right. we appreciate well, Hopefully, he's a listener. Yeah, yeah we appreciate thank that, you. man. I love it. All right. I we, had, we had some good ones tonight. Dom, we like mm-hmm. his yeah. Huds. Yeah. And, oh, I love it. Huds. You have a nickname now. And he said, he said he loved this movie. So, yeah. Sea Huds. Yeah. <laughs> All right, see Huds. All right, so we're going to go to our final wrap-ups, and then we're going to go around the table. Who are we starting with? Colin! That's me. What did you think about rubber? Um, <clears throat> well, I mean, I feel like I've been, whatever I was going to say here, Beaten I've been kind of saying through oh, the okay. entire uh, <laughs> the show. The entire? Yeah. Are you tired? <laughs> hey, hey. Are you, totally, are you, oh, it's bad. It's are you bad. tired of talking about this movie? No, <laughs> not yet. Are you going to retire? I was just going to say <laughs> Oh, we're high fiving for no reason. We don't deserve it. We don't so deserve many it at puns. All. So many puns to be had oh, in this movie, brother. Oh. Um, yeah. So, please give us your entire. Like I up. said, I have seen it <laughs> twice, and so my first experience with the movie, I think, you know, was that kind of, um, you know, looking at it as like this is some kind of abstract, you know, thing, and I think so. Okay, let's go on the. On the first watch, which is what I'm, how I'm going to recommend this movie tonight, was uh, I found it to be interesting, different, irreverent. Uh, I don't know if I'd say wholly original. Definitely like challenging as far as like, hey, we're going to you know do this thing. It's challenging to you know the viewer and I guess the people who funded it or whatever. Um, it was fun in kind of a uh, punk rock kind of way where we're, you know, we've got somebody's money and we're just going to do whatever the fuck we want with it. <laughs> you know, it's got that kind of spirit to it. Um, and so I enjoyed it. I hadn't watched it again since. So I know Michaela likes this enough that she's, you know, owns it and has watched it several times. I downloaded a version <laughs> of it to keep it because I'm like, I saw this thing and it's like this really weird alien, you know, artifact that you got to get a copy of somehow. But she and, hates uh, Dune and has seen it like seven times. So that, well, like, so like, yeah, yeah, right, right, yeah, so yeah exactly. exactly. Yeah. Collection. Um, so, yeah, but tonight at watching it, it was like, man, this movie hates me. And so I was really <laughs> like getting that vibe. Like, I was like, I, this movie has contempt for me, and I have contempt for this movie. So, but I think that was only <laughs> visible on the second viewing. Mm-hmm. You know, my first I experience agree. going into tonight's, I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, I remember Rubber. I kind of mm-hmm. like that movie, right? And this time around, I was like, you motherfucker. You know, <laughs> so I was kind of like, I you felt like, like personally <laughs> assaulted by the movie and was reacting as you know, I was offended. I guess by yeah. it, or the, mm-hmm. the the sensibility behind it. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think that you know. I mean, maybe if you listen to this show mm-hmm. now, we're like, yeah, you should see this movie, and you go into it seeing that it'll color it. But mm-hmm. I mean, I would say it's a um, it's a, of interest to adventurous moviegoers. If you are tired of what you see at the multiplex and you want something a little more unique, then Rubber are you is probably, ti- tired? Uh, tired? Let's see what I did. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Why yeah. are, they doing that? are you tired of seeing yeah. bold They did movies? it on their one, original poster. They did that. Yeah. Yep. So I'll give it uh, let's go with two and a half Goodyear tires out of four. Sean. Okay. Um, I'll give a lot of credit to unique movies because, again, like we said, we get a lot of the same crap over and over again. Mm-hmm. And so going into this, like, it's definitely a unique movie. And um, just it's it's like we said, a surreal movie. And I appreciate it for that because I don't see a lot of surreal cinema. cinema. Um, I haven't, like we said the other week, I don't uh, haven't seen a lot of David Lynch movies. Did or you like, TV well, shows. Well, fine. If you yeah. like this, then maybe that's Well, I mean, but maybe, yeah. maybe so. But uh so I, I I don't see a lot of that stuff, and so I mean seeing this, like I appreciate what they did. Maybe they have contempt for the audience, their audience, um, as we discussed here. But uh, it's the movie does a lot um, that is very uh, very different, very interesting for me. So I mean I I, I liked it. I liked seeing what they were going to do. Again, I mean they'll tell you right off the bat. It doesn't and, you know it doesn't make sense, but you know. 
Maybe it's not supposed to. It's obviously not supposed to. Um, and I'm okay with that because if just it's it's one unique kind of ball of a movie where he just it exists in itself, and it just doesn't kind of. Uh, nothing from the outside gets into it. You know what I mean? It's like isolated onto itself. And I appreciate it for that. It just kind of exists in a little bubble. So um, I liked it. Uh, I recommend it. Uh, it did have a little contempt for its audience, but I think, you know, it's unique enough where I don't think you get many films like this nowadays. So uh, it's definitely worth a watch. Uh, I give it, uh, I'll say three exploding crows out of five. Hmm. Three. Okay. Out of five. Um, yeah, I I agree that it, this movie was definitely creative for sure. It was very unique. Um, I felt like a lot of the scenes were way too long. Um, I specifically thought it could have ended a lot earlier. I think it definitely could have. I think it could have ended. Um, it didn't need that five minutes of end credits. No, it didn't. It also didn't need um, like twelve minutes of the tricycle, f- yeah, like going yeah. through the desert. I think it could have ended uh. um, the trike coming out of the house and going around the corner of the house. I think it could have ended there. It didn't yeah. need all that extra stuff with. Mm-hmm. And if nothing else, right when it gets to the road, is kind of wheeling away. Yeah, and right. the black. And if they wanted it to like start recruiting, they were kind of in a dumpy area. They could have just. Like a couple tires could have popped up and went with it around the corner. Like right. mm-hmm. it didn't need that extended. Or if nothing else, you get that shot where it's going down. You're in front of it. It's going down the road by itself, and then just a bunch of tires rolling yeah. behind oh, it. Yeah, that would have been great. Yeah, yeah. You, you got it. The image is the thing he's aiming for. The Hollywood sign. The Hollywood yeah, sign. That's where he's going. He's that's, trying to really stick it to Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. They they really He could have done that, but he could have done it so much sooner. Yeah. Um, I actually wanted the the one of the tires for the wheelchair to pop off and follow it. That's oh, really that would have been. That's so great. Right. I was waiting for that. I so was like, great. that would have been fantastic. Huge missed opportunity. Yeah, I thought so. That's another half a million right there. Mm. Yeah. No, I don't know. Uh, that guy was dead. They could have popped a, popped a tire off. Just yeah. give an empty wheelchair. Yeah. 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 I thought, yeah. It really was like, I'm sorry. It, no, go just, ahead. Uh, like, now it's th- I'm thinking about it. Like, the movie, like, the climax of the movie is the death of Wings, the Wings Hauser character. Yeah. yeah. Right. It right? is. And yeah. then it's like, well, where the fuck do you go from here? Like, well, what? but it ends with that. He's the but only it, reason everything's still going. It does, but it yeah, doesn't. But There's it, like 12 minutes of a trike exactly. going on. Well, yeah. Right. That's, well, like, that's, but that's the thing. He's the only reason it's still going to have the, all that superfluous keep going after he's dead. But you, that's your brain like, starts eh. to go like, is there still more to this? Right. Where exactly. Can it possibly go? Right. How much longer is this movie? Right. And that's what he, exactly, exactly what you start thinking at that point. It, it it should have ended right after the trike coming out and going around the corner. They could have done something there, brought it to Hollywood really fast if that's what they wanted to do. But it could have ended a lot sooner than it did. And I felt like there were several scenes that were a little extended like that that could have been shortened. Um because it did feel a little long to me at some points. Um, but I, I, I did enjoy it. it I, I, I enjoyed the, the dialogue, what, was, what there was of it um, with the sheriff. I thought he was kind of funny. I actually really liked the accountant. I thought he was really good. And I loved his story that he was telling at the very end before he died about how he killed his brother. <laughs> oh, I was like, great. what the does fuck? He, and does he not know the food's poisoned? Like, yeah. he brought the turkey. Uh, he knows it is. He just... He's just done. He's just like, I I kind of loved the accountant (laughs) character. I thought he was great. Um, So there were elements of it that I really liked. I I don't think I would watch it again. Um, It it was a little much. Um, I like movies that that you pull from it what you want as a viewer. Um, But I felt like this one, it was a bit of a cop-out and not as much of a statement as he wanted. Um, But... Like I said, for for um, for an interesting view, I, I'd say go ahead and give it a shot. I give it uh, two poison turkeys out of five. There you go. All right. So a little bit of background on how I discovered this movie. So this movie came out when I was 20 years old and I was in art school in college. And uh, our the way that our art school worked is that you would just come in and you would work on your project, but... Everyone got a rotating day if they got to pick a movie that would be projected on the wall to, like, quote-unquote, inspire us while we were working on our projects. 
everyone hated everything I picked. <laughs> and and once I found out they hated it, I'm like, fuck you. I'll keep picking shitty stuff. Like, I showed them White Dog, which is, well, I'll probably make you guys watch at some point too, uh, which is Christy McNichols in it. It's 80s. It's on Criterion. It's about a racist German Shepherd dog that attacks black people. Uh, really it's really insane. Really. Yep. This sounds great. Yeah, it's it's great freak show I material. Love black people. Yeah, white like buffalo. I just where wanna... Charles okay. Bronson. <laughs> yeah, it's the gigantic white buffalo that can yeah. break through walls. Yeah, huh. no, white dog is about a racist dog. Um, it's and it's on Criterion, and it's got great box art, unlike this movie. But you know, um, so I would always pick you know things that were really inspiring to me, and it was always really weird stuff. And this movie came out in theaters. I saw it as soon as it came out in DVD. I bought it and brought it in, and we watched it in art class, and everyone else was like. They were on board until about the pool scene. That's where everybody mm -hmm. dips out of this movie is the pool scene. And um, this is where you find out where your life soulmates are. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. Um, so I the first two times I saw this movie, like, I mean, I was 20 years old. So this is pretty fucking formative for me. Like, mm. you know, when you're like in your late teens, early 20s, and you're discovering, like, quality movies for the first time. Like, I feel like everyone goes through, like, everyone watches, you know, like, Fight Club and Pie and mm -hmm. um, Requiem for a Dream. Mm -hmm. And there's, mm -hmm. everyone has those same five movies that, like, really start to develop your taste. Mm -hmm. This was, like, right after that point for me. So this, like, really helped push my taste into, like, not mainstream movies, into, like, you know, indie and more foreign films. So it's really formative for me. However... Every time I watch it, I like it less. Um, I think watch it once and don't ever watch it again. I would agree. I I, I think yeah. I would agree. I yeah. think it loses something every time you watch it, um, which is weird to say because I own it. You know, like why like why do why do I own it? True. <laughs> you know, but you know um, I mean, you got to get it somehow to figure it out. Right? Yeah, right. yeah. Somehow it's like I got to. Right. There's nothing else like this. Right. This right. is the example you can hold up. Right. But how else do you come to the conclusion that it is one and done? It should yeah. Be, unless you are watching right. more than once. You have it mm -hmm. to show to other people. Like, yeah. So she'll always have it to right. Oh. Like, you want something for tonight? Like, you should you try go. rubber. Then yeah. you'll find out who that person. Half yeah. my movie collection is oh you've never seen uh, is is people being like oh I've always wanted to see that and then I have to watch it with them so that's uh, why I've seen movies so many times is because like I own things people have always wanted to see and just have never like, seen. Here's Robert, yeah, I'm gonna leave the room. Well, yeah, but go ahead. I'll let you borrow this. You know. Um. Oh yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but it, however, it still is an original story and in a culture where we have very little to no original storytelling, and it's a low budget movie. Whereas right now every movie is insanely high budget. Um, I have to give it credit for that, but and the practical effects are great, um, and I think they do a really good job of building suspense and emoting with something as simple as a tire. I think it's worth a watch, but like I said, watch it once and then don't ever revisit it because um, the the initial exploration of the movie is what makes it interesting. Mm -hmm. After that, it really loses its. Um, it's an experience. Kind exactly. Of movie. It really is. Yeah. It's an. It really is like a weird art house film in that yeah. way that like it's it's a weird art experience. And then yeah. after that, you know, watch it, yeah. you just try and figure it out. Exactly. That's doing. And that's not its purpose. Yeah. 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 It's a one and done. Yeah. So yeah, one and done it, and then don't ever go back to it. There you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So that's rubber. Uh, on the Saturday Night Freak Show next week, it's going to be my pick. Colin, what are, what are we watch? watching next week? I think we're going to watch the original 1995 classic film, Ooh. Ghost in the Shell. All right, oh. all right. Oh. That's right. Oh. Colin's got topical. Yeah. Topical. topical. I'm just curious, like how many of you <laughs> have is, seen it? Yep, I've animated? seen it. Yeah, the animated okay, one. animated. Right. Right. So this it's will fantastic. Ruin the new movie right. for you, just so <laughs> yeah. You know. yeah. That's okay. <laughs> but okay, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. All right, so that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, the basement is going dark. <laughs>